Hello everyone and welcome to this new session on surveying. Today I'm going to explain how to set out a circular curve using long code method. I will explain the calculations needed and the procedure on the ground for setting out using tot station. So let's get started. So let's start with the purpose of circular curves. Curves are used to form smooth transition between straight portions of roads or railways. So in other words, to transfer direction from straight to straight. In the design stage of a road or railway, you will have these straight lines like these. And the aim of circular curves is to transfer direction smoothly from here to here using a circular curve. And the aim of setting out is to position markers at regular intervals along the center line of the road. For example, if this is a road here, so to set out, you need to locate markers at regular intervals along the center line of the road, as you can see here. So now let's say that this road has started from this point, for example, and this is the distance here of the road, this is the first point of the road, and the distance would be zero. And then let's say we are going to position markers with an interval, for example, 20 meters. After 20 meters, we are going to locate another marker. Now the interval between each two markers is 20 meter, 20 meter, 20 meter. That means from the beginning to this point here, for example, the distance would be 60 meter. If you have a point here, the distance from the beginning to here would be 80 meters. If we have another point here, the distance would be 100 meters from the beginning. Okay? Now, this is a very important term that you need to understand. This is called chainage. Okay? So, the distance from the start point of a road along the center line is called the chainage. So, the chainage of this point is 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. 100, 120, 140. This is in case if the interval is 20 meters. If the interval is 10 meters, that means this is 0. Here, I will use a different color. So this is 0. Here it would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. So this is now if the interval is 10 meters. So the change assembly is a distance from the start point of a road along the center line and we are going to use this term a lot the change before we start the calculations for setting out a curve let me start with some terms that we are going to use some terminology related to the circular curve we will call the intersection point between the two straights this is the first straight line this is the second straight line the intersection point between them is called intersection point I here in the, for example. So I is the intersection point, this one. Okay. LC is the curve length. This is the curve length. This is in red now. The curve length is between the start point, the first tangent point, and the second or the last point. Okay. So these two points, T here and U here are called tangent points the start and the finish points t and u in this case these are called tangent points in some references they will use of course different terms t1 t2 for example these are the tangent points now the tangent length it and i u so these are the tangent points and the tangent length in green now, the length between I and T. This is tangent length IT and from this way I to U. And these are equal. And then the deflection angle, which is this angle here. The deflection angle between the two straights. And the radius of the curvature, which is this one, R. The radius of the circle. This is a circular curve, guys. Uh, this is the radius of this circle. And mostly we will get all of these numbers from the planning stage, yeah? But for us now, it's not our focus, the planning stage. Our focus is how to do the calculations for setting out this curve on the ground. 
Before we move ahead, I would like to mention something important for deflection angle. If you haven't been given the value of the deflection angle, but instead you've been given the whole circle bearings of the entry tangent point and the whole circle bearing of the exit tangent point. So this is the entry tangent point T. So the whole circle bearing, this is north direction. The whole circle bearing, as you know, it is an angle from north to this line, IT. If you've been given this whole circle bearing, and also if you've been given the whole circle bearing of the exit point, this one, this is north, this is the whole circle bearing of the exit one, yeah. So you can easily calculate the deflection angle theta, which is the difference between these two numbers, very simply. So theta, the deflection angle, if you've been given the entry whole circle bearing, this one, and the exit whole circle bearing, this one, is the difference between the entry and the exit whole circle bearings, okay? For more information about the whole circle bearings, what are the whole circle bearings, there is a separate video called whole circle bearing calculations so that you will have a better understanding if this is your first time to come across this term, okay? So now let's move ahead. Now these are the relations that you will need to do the calculations for setting out a curve, a circular curve. So first, you will need these four values from the design stage. I summarized the calculations needed here on the right. But to do these calculations, you need these four values. These are the through chainage of I, the intersection point. You need the through chainage of I, the intersection point, and radius of the curve, R. You need the deflection angle, theta. And you need the peg interval the peck interval along the center line every 10 meters or 20 meters or 15 meters etc okay once you have these four numbers ready with you you can start the calculations and the method that i'm going to explain today is called the long code method there are a lot of methods different uh, ways to set out a circular curve of course i'm explaining today one of them okay i will go through these relations now quickly and then we will take a numerical example for a better understanding and then to apply all of these relations to arrange in the end the setting out table that we will use on the ground. The first thing that you need to calculate is IT, the tangent length using this relation R times tangent theta divided by 2. Theta is known, R is known. Okay, then you need to calculate the through chainage of T. This is T, the first tangent point. You are going to calculate the chainage of T, which is the chainage of I, which is given to you, here should be, minus IT, which is tangent length that you have calculated here. And then you need to calculate the length of the curve, LC, which is R, the radius times theta deflection angle. Here you need to make sure that theta in radians, not in degrees. So convert theta from degrees into radians. And then you need to calculate the chainage of u. u is the finish point or the second tangent point, which is the chainage of t plus lc. lc from this step, okay? The chainage of t from here. So the chainage of t from this step. Okay. As you will see, every time we are going to calculate a number and then we will use it in the next step and so on. Then you will need to calculate the initial subcord length, which is the chainage of the following point minus the through chainage of T. The through chainage of T from here. But what is the chainage of the following point? I'm going to go through this when we solve the example. And then the final subcode, the through chainage of u from here, minus the chainage of the previous point. Okay, also I'm going to go through this when we solve the example. 
Once you have the initial subchord and the final subchord, you need to calculate the tangential angles. Using this relation, alpha, the tangential angle, is the chord length divided by r times 90 divided by pi. Okay, so this is called the tangential angle. And then you are going to calculate the length of the long chord using these relations. The distance from the tangent point to the first point of the curve, here for example, is 2r times sine alpha 1. Alpha 1 is a tangential angle from this relation. And then the second point along the curve would be 2r sine alpha 1 plus alpha 2. The third point 2r sine alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3, etc until we reach the last point 2r sine alpha 1 2 3 4 to the last point alpha and let's call it now these are the distances here now of course i expect that you can't get everything clear from the previous slide but just i wanted to introduce these relations and then to use them in this example so let's take this numerical example calculate the data necessary for setting out a curve using long code method, use the following data. So this is our example. We have been given these data. The radius, 200 meters. The chainage of I, chainage of this point, intersection point, is 436 meters, 0.413. The deflection angle, this one, is 20 degrees, 9 minutes, 26 seconds. And the peak interval is 10 meters for this example. So 10 meters, that means along the center line from the beginning is 10 meters. So we started at some point 0, 10, 20, 30. Every 10 meters, we have to fix a peg in the ground or a nail to mention the center line of the road. Now we have all the data needed for calculations. Let's start our calculations. Okay, so first we need to calculate the tangent length. This is the relation, of course. It, the tangent length, is r, which is 200 meters in our case, times tangent theta divided by 2. Just apply, you have theta, you have r. Theta is 20 degrees, 9 minutes, 26 seconds, divided by 2. And then you will have the tangent length, which is 35 meters, 0.548 in our case. And then we are going to calculate the through chainage of t. So this is i. The through chainage of i is given. If we take away this distance, which is it that we have just calculated, we will get the through chainage of t, this one, which is the chainage of i minus it. The chainage of i is given here, 436.413 minus it that we have calculated here, 35 meters, 0.548. And the answer is, 400.865 meters. This is the through chainage of T, this point. So now we have the chainage of T, okay, which is this value 400.865. Now let's calculate the length of the curve, which is R, the radius, times theta. And of course, theta is given in degree minute second to convert this into radians. We will use this times pi divided by 180 for the conversion and radius is 200 meters so the length of the curve is 70.362 70 meters 0.362 so this is the length of this curve from here to here from t to u this is the length of the curve from here to here okay now we have calculated the chainage of t which is 400.865 and now we have calculated the length of the curve which is 70 meter point 362 now the next step is to calculate the chainage of u the chainage of this point very simply the chainage of u is the chainage of t here plus lc yeah the chainage of t plus lc and we have calculated these two numbers and it is here 471 0.227 meters. This is now the chainage of U, the finish point of the curve. 
Now we need to calculate the initial subcode length, which is the change of the following minus the change of t. To let you understand this, I will return to this slide about the change. Okay, we agree that the change will start from the first point and then in our case the interval is 10 meters, it will increase 10 by 10, 10, 20, 30, etc. And we have calculated in our case the change of first tangent point T and it was 400.865. So the change of T, 400.865. So this is the change of T. So that means from the beginning, in this example, from the zero point until we reach the first tangent point here, T, the distance is 400.865. Now, using an interval of 10 meters, what would be the next change, the next point? Let's say it is here. What would be using an interval of 10 meters? So we started from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, until we reach this point here. And we have calculated the distance from the beginning until this point is 400.865. What would be the next point? It would be the change for the next point. It would be 410. So this is what we call the, the change of the following point, the point following T. So T is 400.865. Following point would be 410 and then 420, 430, 440, 450. 460, 470, and then we will reach the finish point, which is called U in our case. And the change of this one, we have calculated that to be 471.227 meters. So this is the change of T, we have just calculated that. Here we have 430, 440, 450, 460. 470 and then the change of the last point along the curve which is 471.227 now for now I think we've got what we need which is the change of the following point the point following the T point this one let's return to our main slide here so the change of the following point in this case would be 410 minus the change of t that we have calculated here which is 400.865 so this is called the initial subcode and its length here 9.135 meters so 9 meters in this case so let's return to here just to let you see it so if you look here guys you know that the interval is 10 we will call these chords. The general chord length is 10 meters. This is the general one. But because we have a curve, we have entered a curve, we are going to calculate this chord now from here to here. Okay? And this is what we call the initial subcord. Okay? Which is 410 minus 400.865. This is what we call the initial subcord. And then we will have 10 meters here interval, 10 meters here, 10 meters here. These are the general chords, 10 meters, 10 meters. And then the last one, the very last one, we have a distance, short distance in this case. This is the final subcord. So what is the length of this final subcord? It's simply the change of U, this number, minus the change of the previous point. So the change of U minus the change of the previous point, the point previous to U, which is in this case 470. So here we have 470 and here we have the change of U, 471.227. The difference between them would be called the final subcord and in this case it's clearly 1.227 meters. Okay, and the initial one was 9.135 meters. So these are the initial subcord and the final subcord and between them this is what we call general chords. In our case the length of general chords is 10 meters.
which is the interval given to us. Okay, now the final subcord, as you have just seen, which is the change of U minus the change of the previous point, 471.227 minus 470. In this case, 1.22 meters. After that, you need to calculate the tangential angles using this relation. Alpha equals the chord length divided by R times 90 divided by pi. You know that R is 200 meters given to us. Okay, what is the chord length? As you can see here, we have three different chord lengths. We have the final, we have the initial chord length, and we have the general chord length. Okay, the initial one, 9 meters, 0.135, the final chord, 1.227, and between them, the general chord, which is 10 meters. So because of that, because we have three different chord lengths, we are going to calculate the three values for the tangential angles. The first value, which is called alpha 1, the initial one, based on the initial subcord lengths. Okay, so the chord length in this case is 9.135. This is the initial subcord divided by 200 times 90 divided by pi. And we will have, and these are angles, guys. These are angles, not distances. These are tangential angles, okay? So this is the first angle, the initial angle, based on the initial subcode. And then we have angles from 2 to 7, alpha 2 to alpha 7, based on the general chord length. And this is, the general chord length is 10 meters, divided by R times, 90 divided by pi and this is the value of the angles alpha 2 to alpha 7 now why alpha 2 to alpha 7 because we have six general short chords now okay what are these let's return to here now you know that this is the initial subcord from here to here and you know that this is the final subcord from here to here so this is the initial and this is the final and between them how many general chords we have we have one two three four five six we have six general chords in this case okay because of that we have calculated the initial tangential angle which is called alpha one based on the initial subcord and then we have calculated from alpha two to alpha 7 based on these six general chords so we started from alpha 2 and then we have six values all of them have the same value because we have the same chord length 10 meters every time and then the last alpha based on the final chord which is called alpha 8 okay so this is why we have alpha 2 to alpha 7 because these are all have the same values because they are based on the general chords every time 10 meters okay let's return to the main slide here so this is the alpha 8 based on the value of the final subcord which is 1.227 by applying this relation we can get alpha 8 so this is alpha 1 these are alpha 2 to alpha 7 because we have in our case 6 general chords and then finally we have alpha 8 based on the final subcode i hope this is clear to you now guys now after we calculated the tangential angles we need to calculate the long chord lengths you know that we have now these points along the center line let's call them this is t as you know tangent point this is let's call it t1 center line 1 c2 c3 c4 c5 C6, C7, and then we will have finally the tangent point T. So the long chord is this distance between T, now from T to C1, this distance is called the long chord length. And then we are going to calculate this distance from T to C2, this one, T, C2, and then this distance T to C3 and so on and we will do this using the following relations t 
TC1 to R sine alpha 1. Alpha 1, we have just calculated all alphas from 1 to 8. If we apply this, R is given to be 200, of course, and alpha 1 is being calculated. After we calculated this value, we need to make sure that this value is exactly the same of the initial subcord value. Okay, because this is the same distance from here to here. This is the initial subcord and this is TC1. If this is C1, TC1, the initial subcord, these are the same. So this value should be exactly the same of the initial subcord. Okay, this could be a work as a double check that your calculations are correct. And then TC2, 2R sine alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Okay, and this is the value. Now these are distances, of course, from T in meters. And every time you will add 1 alpha. T, C3, 2R sine alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3. And then T, C4, we will add another 1 to be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 plus alpha 4. And these are the calculated distances. And the first time it was 9.135 and then 19.127 and then 29.110 and then 39, and then 49, and then 58, and then 68, and then 70 meters. This is the last point, which is from T to U. The distance from T to U, this distance here, this is, the length of this one is 70 meters in this example. After we've done all of these calculations, you need to arrange a table. And let's call this a setting out table. You need to arrange the setting out table. In this table, in the first column, you need to state the point to be set out. You need to set out T, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, etc. And here the chainage of each point. You know the chainage of T, we have calculated that, 400.865, and then chainage of C1, 410, and then 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then the chainage of U, which is 471.227, as you know. Now, the cumulative tangential angle. Here you have to state the cumulative tangential angles. For T, it would be zero. Okay, we will, for setting out, we are going to set up the total station over T. Value here would be zero. And then you will start adding alpha by alpha. Here, for C1, the tangential angle for C1, you know it is alpha 1, which is, so the first one is 0, the second one, it would be here alpha 1, which is 1 degree, 18 minutes, 31 seconds. And then here, alpha 1 plus alpha 2, it is a cumulative angle. Here, alpha 1 plus alpha 2, and here, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3, here, Alpha 1, 2, 3, and 4, Alpha 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, etc. Okay, so every time you will add Alpha until you reach the last one here Alpha 1 plus Alpha 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 for the last one here. So these are called cumulative tangential angles. We will use them for setting out. And here you have to write down the long chord to be set out from T. Now your total station over T. To set out the first point, which is C1, this one here, for example, let's call it C1. To set out this, the distance is 9.135. Just you need to transfer these distances to the table here. T C1, T C2, T C3, 4, 5, 6, 7, T U here. Okay, just transfer these numbers that you have calculated here to the table. Once you have completed this table and it is ready with you, the most important thing, the commutative angle and the long code, because these are the numbers that we are going to use to set out the curve. The procedure now for setting out on the ground, you will get this table with you and then you will get your total station and then you are going to set out this curve. You will set up your total station over the first tangent point here. You will set up your total station over T. And then you will cite I. Here there would be a present to cite. So you will set up total station over T. Cite I. The intersection point. This is the intersection point. 
Okay, now before I continue, there is a very important note. If you are wondering, how can I find I and T on the ground? This is a very good question, in fact, because I assume that you have T and you have I on the ground, and then you will start from there to set out the curve. My focus today is how to set out the center line, okay, of the road, not how to set out I and T. But if you are wondering how to set out I and T, there is another video called setting out a point from two control stations this is very important to watch so that you will learn how to set out i and t once you have t and i on the ground we will start from this point to set out the rest of the curve okay now after you sighted i from t set the horizontal angle on the screen of your total station to zero now your total station is sighting this direction i and the horizontal angle reads zero now from here to set out the first point let's call it of course c1 to set out this point you have to look at the table now setting out table that you have arranged here the table to set out c1 this is c1 here i need to turn my total station by this angle Rotate by your total station by 1 degree, 18 minutes, 31 seconds, and then you need to measure this distance, and then to fix a peg in the ground, and by doing that, you have set out C1. Let's return here. So to set out C1, now you are sighting I, and the horizontal angle is 0. Turn it by this angle, alpha 1, okay, which is 1 degree, etc. We have just seen that on the table. And then, once you've turned by the alpha 1, now you are sighting this direction. Now your total station is sighting this direction. Along this direction, another operator should move forward and backward along this line. And then the surveyor behind the total station will measure the distance every time. Somebody here will hold a prism. And then, every time the surveyor here behind the total station will measure the distance, in this case, it should be, let's look at the table again. The distance here should be 9.135. If it reads 10, for example, this surveyor should ask the other one to come forward, for example, and then they will repeat the measuring the distance until they exactly achieve this distance, 9.135 meters, on the screen of the total station. When they read this distance, that means this is the exact location for setting out C1. They have to fix a peg in the ground exactly in the location of C1. And by doing that, they have set out C1. To set out C2, let's return to the table. Now, it is a commutative angle. Guys, this is important. It is a commutative angle. To set out C2, they have to continue turning the total station. Now, they will not zero again. Continue turning total station until they read on the screen this value 2 degrees 44 minutes 27 seconds on the screen of the total station and then they have measured this distance to fix a peg in the ground and this is C2 okay from here okay they will continue now turning until they achieve the value of the cumulative angle for C2 which is 2 degrees something in our case and then now once they have read the, this value on the screen of the total station, that means the total station is sighting this direction here. Now along this direction, okay, again the same, they will repeat now the same thing. A surveyor here with a prism should move along this line, backward and forward, and the other surveyor here will guide them, and then every time they will measure the distance until they exactly read the distance of 19. 0.127 on the screen of the total station for the distance and then they have to fix a peg in the ground and this is point C2 and so on for C3 let's return to the table we have the commutative angle 4 and we have the distance 29.110 okay they will continue turning the total station until they read on the screen of the total station this angle which is 4 they will continue here 
until they read 4 etc this angle that we have just seen and that means they are sighting this direction now along this direction they have to measure that distance 29 meter point something and then to fix a peg in the ground and this is c3 and etc so this is the procedure for setting out the center line of the road once you've completed the table you can check that your calculations are correct from this value here the last value here of the cumulative angles this value should be equal to theta divided by 2 theta which is the deflection angle in our case theta was 20 degrees 9 minutes and 26 seconds if we divide this by 2 it would be exactly 10 4 minutes and 43 seconds so this is as a double check that your calculations and your cumulative angles are all correct before you sit out on the ground so this is an important note that i wanted to mention before I finish this video so let me summarize what you have learned in today's session so you learned the terms related to the circular curve setting out you learned all the relations for calculating the values required for setting out and how to arrange setting out table which is important and then you learned in details how to set out the center line points on the ground using total station this method is called long code method I hope that was useful to all of you guys and I hope that you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much for listening and see you soon. Bye now.